stop using custom GPT and start leveraging the OpenAI Assistant API and the thread capabilities to create your own user database. This is MTI as your thought partner to build and deploy AI agents. Perhaps you are a tech enthusiast or an AI entrepreneur who wants to unleash the full potential of your custom GPT, who'd like to collect users' data and provide more personalized recommendation, but you do not have the right tools or knowledge to equip your assistant with a database. Don't worry, my friend, because in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can create a lightweight database that you can connect with your open AI assistant, create a simple web interface where a user can come in, log in with their password, and then we store all that information securely in a database. Okay, watch this video till the end so you can understand exactly how this process works. First, let's talk about the disadvantages of using custom GPT without a connected database, because without the connected database, you can't store or retrieve user specific data or information, making it less personalized and efficient. This is where the thread capability comes in for the assistant API. With the thread, you can now store collection of messages between the user and the assistant. So now you have an entire conversation that you can tap into for memory or personalized recommendation. And now every thread is going to have a thread ID. So you can imagine every user who interacts with your assistant can also be assigned to a thread ID. And we're going to use a database to capture that information. And I'm going to show you exactly how this is going to work step by step. All right, so let's imagine you have your assistant. Your assistant is going to be connected to backend and then it's going to be connected to a front end. So we're going to create a complete uh, application that takes in users information, stores it, logs them in, registers them, etc. So we need something like a database to do that. So we'll call it DB and the database is going to interact with the uh, back end as well as the uh, front end as well as the assistant. So as you know, one of the components of the assistant is threads. If you look at the thread documentation, you can create a thread such as this, use this function to create a thread. When you create a thread, you're going to get a thread ID, something that looks like this, all right? So the question is, what if we can use a user's name, password, and thread ID, store it in a database? A user's name, password, and thread ID, store it in a database. Let's imagine the database has user name, their password, and thread ID. So every time a user logs in names, so every time a user logs into the application, it's going to check if they exist in the database. If they do, for example, the user could be Mark. They could have a password to log in and it's stored securely, of course. So we don't know what the password is, but we know there is a thread ID. So every time Mark logs in and we find a record for Mark, uh, we're going to pass the thread ID signed to Mark previously. Let's say there is another user called uh, Mary. She logs in, but there is uh, no uh, a record previously, we're going to tell Mary to uh, create a password and then we're going to assign a thread ID to Mary by creating a thread uh, using the thread feature of the OpenAI system API. So once this is created, we have like a database. Every time Mary logs in, she has access to all her past conversations. Every time Mark logs in, he has access to all his past conversation, etc. And you can think about this for your use case as well. If you're a coach and you want to provide persistent uh, help for your users, you can track their messages, summarize their thread conversation, etc., and then give them more personalized recommendation, etc. This is a great use case, what I use for my committee as well to provide more personalized recommendations for uh, advanced users. Now, also, if you want to join my school community, the link is going to be in the description. Also, if you want to join my school community, the link will be in the description. Also, feel free to join my school community. The link is going to be in the description. You're going to get a lot of free resources under the resource hub. It'll help you in your AI assistant journey. And you also have access to a beginner to pro Python course where I talk about some basic functions, JSON structures, APIs, etc. So if you want to brush up on Python concepts, you can do so as well. So the link will be in the description. I'll also provide a link to take the AI agent challenge in the description. So you're going to be able to create your own AI agent from understanding APIs to building and deploying your AI agents in a matter of three days, creating database, creating search capabilities. We have no code, low code and full code solutions. So we have a database right here like this, and we need to set this up using Python code. So the assistant is going to work with the thread feature and thread, as you recall, is a collection of messages between the user and assistant. So it's going to have user assistant, user assistant, something like that. So that enables the assistant to have persistent knowledge about past conversations. All right. So he's going to pull in the thread from the database. Database is going to have user password thread. 
Okay, and front end is going to have a simple login feature for your app. The back end is going to create a simple chat interaction. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up. You don't actually need to write any code. You can leverage Claude 3.5 to write the entire code for you. Just understand the components that are going into creating this application and you should be good to go. So we have an empty directory right here. We're going to create a folder called um, assistant with database. We're, let's keep it right here. We're going to open up a VS Studio code and then click on this folder and boom, we are already in the folder. So you need a new file, we need config.py, and then we're going to add main.py. So these are the two files we need. For config.py, this is where we're going to store our API keys and your assistant ID. So the config.py is going to look like this. You're going to have your OpenAI API key and your assistant. You can create your assistant in the OpenAI Assistant Playground and just copy the assistant ID. So it should be already good to go. You don't have to configure anything. And then you have your API keys plugged in and then you have the main.py file, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create your application uh, using Claude 3.5. So at this point, you must be familiar with the Assistant framework and the Assist OpenAI Assistant API. You create an assistant, then you create a thread, which is a collection of messages. And this is the main feature we're gonna be using today to uh, collect users' messages and retrieve them at a later time. Uh, then we create the user's message and once the message is created, we use a run function. So if there's tools or files and other stuff attached to the assistant, it's going to determine whether to uh, use those resources or not. And then it's gonna generate a response and then it's gonna return that response through the assistant message, okay? So now you can use API reference to basically uh, pull out the specific functions that you need for your application, right? So now, if you look at the API documentation, it's structured. Most of the API reference here at the top, we don't really need. We need everything below the assistant. Everything below the assistant is broken down into a couple of sections. You have the assistant, you have the thread, you have the message, and you have the runs and the run step, etc. And then the vector store files, which we're not gonna be using in this tutorial. But this is exactly how the framework is structured. You have assistant, thread, message, runs. So we need to get the threads first. So um, we need to obviously authenticate our OpenAI assistant. So we include uh, some code to authenticate our assistant. So we actually use the API key that we've imported from config and from config import. So we're importing the assistant ID and the OpenAI API key from the config. Then we authenticate our client object. So once we've authenticated our client object, we have access to all the functions provided by OpenAI under the client object. So we have access to all these functions. So we need to provide some context to Claude. So we're going to start gathering some initial code to help Claude write this application. And Depending on the time Claude was trained, it may or may not have access to the full API documentation. We're just going to collect the specific elements to help Claude answer as much as possible. Thread message, we're going to create the message here at the code, right? Runs, create run, default. So we need the run feature. And then as you know, run goes through, um, a run goes through a run cycle. It could be completed, failure, incomplete or canceled. So we need to pull out the run status to check if it's completed. We're going to retrieve the uh, thread and get the latest message. So in this case, we also need another function called retrieve runs. We're going to copy this. All right. And then we're going to paste it. Let's take the entire code, go to Claude, and we're going to copy and paste this. All right. And then we can say write a complete streamlit application that interacts with our assistant, with our assistant, okay? So now Claude is going to write the entire Streamlit application. Now, see how easy it is to create your own web app or application that you can use on the fly without having to uh, fiddle around with things like Bubble or, uh, you know, like uh, Flutter or something like that. You can create a complete end-to-end -end app and you're not even writing the code, you just understand how API work and um, how Streamlit works. And then you can uh, create a new terminal. And we're gonna copy paste all that code right here and save it. Now let's run the app by saying Streamlit run main.py. So it's running the application in your local browser. You can also deploy it in Streamlit Cloud to, to deploy it outside of your local computer, etc. So I get an error message, that's fine. The cloud is not 100% accurate most of the time. Sometimes we get a small error message. And again, most of the error messages can be diagnosed with a simple tweak here and there. Uh, 
and most people do not read error messages so i encourage you to read it it's really easy when you start reading it understand the line numbers etc so over here it says cannot import assistant id we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it and see where assistant id is mentioned all right so we're going to go at the top recall the assistant id is written in small letters that's where the confusion happened so claude missed that part so we're going to make sure we copy this exact name and, and then go back to our program we say assistant id and then we replace this assistant id here as well so it's ready let's go run the program again all right so i created a simple application we can also uh, provide a little bit more context to get specific elements from Streamlit. So Streamlit is a front-end framework in Python that lets you create uh, UI elements or user interface elements with just a few lines of code. They have reusable blocks of uh, components that you can use. So what we need exactly is a chat input box. So you can actually type chat input right here. So we tell Claude we actually need for the chat input and also this is how assistant ID is stored. Just putting it out there for Claude. Notice that it has written uh, with the right assistant ID now. So it completed the application. Let's run this again, copy this. We paste it, save it. And we go back to, we'll go back to the Streamlit application and boom. It created a complete application now so we can now uh, just start a conversation and then we say actually we probably don't need this we can remove it we'll tell Claude to do that we say hello so as you can see it's getting a response back from the assistant and now let's say we tell Claude to get rid of the starting conversation piece we say um, I don't need the start conversation in the sidebar it's rewriting the application again Boom, so we are going to cop code, we're going to paste it, and then, all right, so we say hello. So the assistant now responded to us. All right, see how easy that was to create your application with code and just working with Claude to fix any, any elements here and there. So this is a good working version, okay? But the question now is, how do we add a database? Okay, we want to add user password uh, and store that in a, in a thread. We're going to go back to Claude and we're going to provide specific in, uh, instruction for Claude to now customize this application with a database. So we go right here. Now, before we start creating a database, let's explore some of the options that we have to create our user database. We have SQLite. It's an excellent lightweight database choice for storing user information. It's serverless, it's self-contained and requires minimal setup. So it's extremely lightweight, single file database. So when you actually create the database, it's stored in your local computer, um, and then you have access to it. You can retrieve elements from that database, etc. You can use Redis, level DB, level DB, tiny DB. All these are accessible for you, all right? We also use vector database, but for a user profile, you do not need a vector database. Now, if you want to create vector databases, I have another video that will help you create your vector database for, let's say, recommendation engines or uh, file search systems or semantic search applications. So we're gonna be using SQLite, all right? So we're gonna tell Claude, I want to create a database that attaches to the assistant. I want to create a data, database, I wanna create a database for this application. The database is going to store username, password, thread ID. So I need a function, so I, they also need, I also, I also need the passwords to be stored securely using hash format. Then um, I want a sidebar element on the left with that will log users in with their username and password. If user is not in the database, I want you to create the new user and as create a thread and assign that thread to the user. If user is in the database, I want you to retrieve the th thread ID after logging, the, logging them in with their password. That thread ID will then be used for the conversation. So rewrite the entire application.
All right, so we have provided all the essential elements needed to now create the database. So Claude is writing the database. It's creating the necessary functions needed to retrieve user information or create user's information, create the database, etc. All right, so this is a complete end-to-end -end application. And very soon, this is going to be pretty normal. You have an idea, you have a custom GPT. Now you want to uh, take your prompt to a product. You can easily do so with Claude and start writing your application. Paste this, All right? And let's go run the application again. You have a username, password, and login. So this is great. So now let's say Sam Altman, and we log him in. Logged in as Sam. This is great. New user created, Sam. All right. So let's say, tell me a joke. All right. So now the assistant provided a joke. Now imagine this. I want to start the application again, and we need to log back in to start conversation with the assistant. Now let's say I log in as Mark Zuckerberg. Let's say Zuck. Password is Z-U-C-K, Zuck log him in log in as mark so i say what was my last question all right so your last question was an upload a file so there was yeah that's when i created the assistant etc so there is no context in that previous conversation so which is good and so we refresh the application again we log sam altman back into the application and then you see logged in as sam so what was my last conversation as you can see it retrieved the last conversation that we had uh, with Sam Altman. So we now have connected a database with our OpenAI assistant. Now this is not possible with a custom GPT. You cannot provide personalized uh, recommendations or even collect users uh, information or data. By using this setup, you can securely store users information and hash their passwords. So it's stored securely. And also the great thing about this process is that you don't even have to write a single bit of code. You just have to understand the components and some of the UI elements and Claude do the heavy lifting, right? So start moving away from custom GPTs, uh, start moving away from Bubble and Flutter and all those no-code platforms because uh, by knowing code, it's gonna give you a unique advantage. The database is also stored securely right here in the same folder. So you're ready to go. So new video, and also make sure you join the school community where you get more resources to uh, learn Python and also take the three day AI agent challenge. So you can start building your agents, deploying that just in a matter of three days. Okay. AI agents are no longer the future. It is the present, my friend. So the more time you wait, the more you're going to fall behind. So take action now.